Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Well, the geysers there at the Norris Junction Old Faithful Basin are definitely active today. Yeah, there's been multiple. See that? We just had a little pop there. There's been multiple geysers going off. A very exciting day for those that like to watch. Um, here's an update what's been going on. This might be Mug Lump. There's a road over here. And I'll show you the location. There's a road back over here, which you can see in the video. Oops, let me zoom in. Little brown geyser. And I wonder if I can pull it over. Yeah, because you can see the intersection, and there is a stop sign here. Yeah, the camera keeps stopping and going, stopping and going. Um, Once in a while, you'll see a car or a truck, and it's park service people that are going on through there but I want to point out we got dead trees here and if it clears out there's a line of dead trees up over through here and now these grew up during the quiet period let me pull this over and you see more dead trees the quiet period when there was no gases or um, superheated hot steam coming up to kill off the trees and I talked about in my last report how there is 27 layers that built up these hillsides of trees during the quiet period and then Yellowstone erupted, buried them in ash and um, made them into petrified trees, petrified forests, some of them standing about 30 feet tall which along uh, different banks cliff edges have eroded away and they um, can now see these petrified trees but this was all built up originally this was a type of area about 12 million years ago of just fat flat plains kind of like what you would see um, in Africa there see the dead trees as that steam clears off yeah all built up because of the continuous eruptions of Yellowstone now Yellowstone has had at least 40 smaller eruptions since its last big eruption but they've had at least 27 eruptions that laid out enough ash to bury whole forests and um, I gave you links and talked about that how these petrified forests go all the way up to Montana now what is currently going on yeah we definitely have an increase in activity today and there is definitely an increase in earthquakes near Chalice Idaho and USGS will tell you it's got nothing to do with Yellowstone but um, what it does have to do for sure is the movement of the North American plate going um, westward southwest we know that the North American plate is moving um, southwest um, and the pressure is building that's why we got so many earthquakes I'll show you what you, they have in the uh, last seven days 150 earthquakes and it used to be these 2.7s and smaller would not show up at Old Faithful or the monitors there at Yellowstone but they are now and there was also an earthquake today down by Soda Springs a magnitude 2.7 very shallow you'll remember um, what two years ago they started having a swarm of earthquakes down there and this is just below the outside uplift ring of Yellowstone um, that they showed back in 2015 now that was five years ago the uplift that's marked in red and you can see the direction of the continent and all these earthquakes here by uh, sawtooth and we got right through here this is the Snake River Plateau and I've talked about the known vents past known vents of uh, volcanic um, lava eruption that came up through here the faults that run through the ground along the Snake River Plateau these faults move north and south or in the direction of north and south the cracks well it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that these earthquakes that are occurring close to Chalice Idaho there is definitely something going on with the caldera we know that magma moves up through this section um, along the Snake River Plateau to the uh, underground caldera there at Yellowstone which is only about three miles under the ground 
And we also know that there's intrusion coming up under the ground from the Gulf of Mexico, two different routes. But this route of the magma system coming up from the west through the Snake River Plateau definitely seems to be showing more activity. Yeah, I'm going to disagree that this has got nothing to do with Yellowstone. Yeah, I think it does. How far is the uplift now? I don't know because, yeah, we got uh, five more years um, since this was mapped out. Let's zoom out and I'll show you how big the uplift is. Here's the United States. Can you see that? We got Oregon, Washington, and California. Now it looks like Old Faithful's going off. But there's been many earthquakes today, and the geysers are really active. And the steam is dark today, too. The uh, snow on the ground in some areas is melted, but we still get it on the rooftops. We still get it on um, some areas of the hillside. Yeah, a lot of activity going on. And it would be nice if they zoomed in on the... Uh, fault system that I talked about um, let me see if I can bring it down a little bit that was showing up through here and I got emails of more steam coming up from that area see how they're cropping it out yeah they're zooming in on the geyser um, but they don't want to show that area maybe it's just a coincidence I don't know they're not going to show oh, here we go Okay, let's move this over. If they would go a little bit closer, it would be nice. But through here the other day was steaming. Yeah, it wasn't steaming because of the hot water coming from Old Faithful. Yeah, it was. You could actually see it coming up out of the ground. So this is what I pulled this morning. And basically all of these earthquakes are from what happened or what's going on in Chalice, Idaho that is affecting the caldera now this is the western boundary three lines of melt unless you want to count the bottom one which is four lines of melt and i've never seen this before um takes about one minute for the earthquakes there in idaho to show up here at yellowstone okay 1529 a 2.8 8.4 kilometers in depth that would be this earthquake right here and then we got this one here um, 1517 that would have been a magnitude 3.2 supposedly 10 kilometers in depth all right 1517 and I talked about the P wave and I talked about um, the S wave in my last video the P wave is the first wave of the earthquake and then that goes right through the surface and then the P wave is the actual shaking which comes in second so if you look at these earthquakes let me close this out see how we got two signatures that would be the P wave and then the S wave and we got another one here at 1141 got another one there yeah they're just throughout this whole monitor for today and I, I took today's and trying to close this and yesterday's you yeah, know look at all the see we got the thickening of the lines look at the heat that came up again this is the western boundary all right just today alone there was 22 earthquakes we got one right here at Yellowstone Lake 1.1 it says um, at 22.55 that would have been uh, yesterday's time 22.25 now again this is the western boundary which is kind of up north the western um, northwest entrance to the park okay we got 22.25 and that would be the 1.1 here we have the tilt, the ground rising in the Norris Junction area. This is from a borehole, a very deep well there, borehole 205. This is the activity for the last 
um, seven days. Yeah, what happened here? Top is north, bottom is east. Yeah, all of a sudden it went pop. And then the last 30 days, it's got it on this monitor too. The Madison River area, top is north, bottom is east. Last seven days. And then the last 30 days. Remember I told you um, how they are monitoring the flow, flow of the magma. What direction it's moving under the ground. X is north, Y is east. We got an easterly direction for the Madison River. And what's going on with Yellowstone Lake? Look at the drop for the last seven days. And look at the trend that all of a sudden it's been doing in the last week. Then we got the last 30 days. Grant, this is a borehole of two. These are all from boreholes. For the last seven days, top is north, bottom is east. So while the monitor at the uh, northern section of the lake is dropping, Grant is rising up. Let me show you. So this area is dropping. The monitor for Yellowstone Lake is there, and Grant is slowly rising up. Now, I've talked about this area many times and how there was a swarm in the past where the magma was trying to push up. Yeah, what's going on? Or all of a sudden, it's dropping. Got to keep an eye on that. Now, new research for the eruption that occurred there in Hawaii. They now believe what happened was because of heavy rain and moisture, it actually collapsed the roof of the magma chamber there in Hawaii, which then allowed the magma to erupt and flow in Hawaii. Um, so if we got, yeah... A sinking of the upper roof of the magma chamber there at Yellowstone Lake. Yeah, that would be a little concerning. We definitely don't want to collapse because we got um, the resurgent dome right here. The Sour Creek resurgent dome. Yeah, we don't want to collapse. A collapse always happens prior to an eruption. Again, this is the monitor for Yellowstone Lake. Now, see, it was going up. Let me go back down here. It was rising, going up all the way up until, what, um, the 20th, maybe. And now it's showing that it's going down. And we have an increase in geothermal activity today there at the park. Here we have Panther, which is near the Montana border. Top is north, bottom is east. One side going down, the other side rising up. See, X is north, Y is east. Last seven days. And then this one down here would be the last 30 days. And then this goes back to when they started monitoring it. Another monitor for Norris Junction. This is borehole 950. Top is north, bottom is east. Just basically, yeah, constant uplift. And then the last 30 days. Another thing, yeah, look at this for the last 30 days. Um, each dot would be uh, an earthquake that caused uplift. But I want to show you something. If they would zoom out again and show you that mountain behind Old Faithful, that mountain is the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome. So, we have two resurgent domes. Sour Creek resurgent dome. And we got something going on where it's dropping. And then over here is the Mallard Lake resurgent dome. Which is near Old Faithful. It's that whole range here. See the lines going through? It's that whole range. And we got more activity going on. Uh, could this be a, a sign? Um, I hope not. I certainly hope not that the two resurgent domes are going to be collapsing soon. I certainly hope not because the ground is so brittle in this area. 
because of the uplift and the earthquakes. It would not take a large earthquake to cause an eruption at Yellowstone. And I'm very concerned about all these earthquakes that we're having over here. Yes, yeah, see, that's not far from the 2015 uplift. Like I said, we do have um, tectonic plate movement, which is creating the pressure here. I hope that's all it is. But we do know, too, that the magma system is just right below the um, Sawtooth Mountain Range. Because of all these earthquakes that have been occurring in this area, um, I'm concerned also that this whole fault zone could rupture all at once. That's another concern of mine. You know, and then when I see all these earthquakes registering, even these smaller ones registering at Yellowstone, yeah, that's a big concern too. There is a lot to be concerned about. So that's all I have for you right now, being thoughts or comments or questions. There's a lot to put together. It could all be separate incidences, but it is very concerning. Um, put your comments down below. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching me once again. Please stay safe, and I will talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.